Hey, hey guys, we are here to talk about math, which is so fun. <laughs> but truth be told, we all have to pick a curriculum for math and I have selected Horizons level three. So I wanna give you guys a little look in the book. So if you're looking into Horizons and you wanna know more about it, then listen up. All right, friends, so first and foremost, I have to give a shout out to the company that publishes Horizons, which is Alpha and Omega Publications, AOP. They are, this curriculum, I have used Horizons level kindergarten one, two, and now we're into level three. They are the only ones who have withstood the test of time uh, as it is the only curriculum that I have carried over year after year. So if you have followed along at all in my homeschool journey since I started this channel back in like 2016 or whatever it was, then, um, then you know that my curriculum is very volatile and lots of things I start and then stop for various reasons. But Horizons Math is the only curriculum that we have stuck with through all of these years. And that's actually saying quite a bit. So a couple of pros. What I love about them is, number one, I think that the pace that they use is just perfect. Um, they have a one-page lesson, and it's front and back. The younger years, it's they have really kind of big font, lots of pictures, lots of colors. So it doesn't feel like you're doing a ton of math. And then as you as your kids graduate into the you know subsequent levels then that font size gets smaller and smaller and that's one thing that i definitely recognized with level two and then going in here into level three and i'll turn the camera around here in a minute and i'll show you but that font size does get quite a bit smaller which then of course encourages your student to write smaller and they can also fit more problems onto the page that way so there is more work, more content here in level three than we have had in previous levels, um, more practice pages and all that kind of good stuff. So pro number one is the length of the lesson and how they kind of approach each lesson each day has been perfect. Now, I have had people ask me before, can my student do two lessons in one day? And the answer, of course, is you know your student better than anybody else. If they're a really good math mind and they love to do math problems, then there is, of course, you could do more than one lesson per day. I have found that for me, and this is just my perspective, is that we just never wanted to do that much work in math in one day, especially as we got into level two. And I'm assuming it'll be the same way for level three. Um, there's just a lot of problems. Sometimes they'll have as many as 20 problems that they have to do, whether it's addition or subtraction. Uh, in level two, we were doing like uh, the thousands place. So each addition problem was actually four addition problems that they had to do. So Anyway, all that being said is that if you want to do two lessons a day, then nobody's going to stop you. Just do it. Um, but we found it better just to have one lesson per day. So, um, okay, so that's really the pro. The con that I feel, and it's really easy to work around for me, is that I do feel like they have a lot of lessons. So the Horizons 3 curriculum comes with 160 lessons, which is the same as all of the other um levels have 160. Now, my school year, typically we don't do 160 school days. So there's just a little bit of front loading work that has to happen on the part of the teacher. Um, and you can decide which which lessons you want to use. Uh, maybe you want to like cut up, cut out a couple of activities here and there, and then, you know, bundle a couple lessons together, whatever you can do. But I do feel like it is a lot of work that we don't necessarily do a great job finishing everything, like every single problem. So that would be like my word to the wise. If you choose to use this curriculum and you've never used it before, is just to make sure that you don't put yourself in a position where you are in, you're like a slave to your curriculum or you're trying to complete every single problem, every single activity on every single lesson. Cause it is rather lengthy and it, like for me, it doesn't fit into my school year. So you're gonna wanna make sure to kind of pay attention to that. Um, Price is always really great. Make sure you grab it on a sale. They typically have sales in the spring and then sometimes in the fall, but you can get these books for a really 
reasonable price compared to other curriculum publishers. Um, there is no vid video or uh, live lesson that goes with it, which I guess could be a con, especially as you get into these upper levels. In level three, we're gonna be doing bigger multiplication, division, fractions, you know, all that good stuff that I pretty much haven't done since I left high school. So there's gonna be, um, they do have a teacher's manual. Now, I haven't used teacher's manuals before in my previous levels, so I went ahead and I just purchased the student books for level three, but I am looking into getting the teacher's manual for like as a used purchase, um, simply because, I, I just don't know, I'm not super confident in my ability to teach the content and there are, there is no like actual instruction and I'll show you when I turn the camera around, but there's no actual instruction in the student books. They just show you a problem and then, you know, it's like here, this is what you need to do. This is what your student needs to do. So having some background might be helpful with that and then also figuring out how to teach those different concepts when it comes to fractions and multiplication might be helpful as well. So without further ado, let me turn the camera around and then I might have some other thoughts come to my brain as I show you, excuse me, just show you what these pages look like. So let's do that. All right, here we go. I am just gonna show you by flipping it through with my hand here. So um, hopefully you'll get some good visuals. All right, so here's the math book one. Each book is going to have 80 lessons and um, between all, let's see, you get 10 lessons and then you're gonna have a test, okay? So here's how it starts. Now for me, here's a little like, this is what I do. When we start a new curriculum or a new book, I actually skip the first 10 lessons because it's all review of what we've just completed in level two. And because of that, I feel like my son is, has a pretty good understanding of where things are. This is always like a really simple beginning. So um, kind of moving a little bit quicker here, what I end up doing is I just don't even do any of these pages. I completely rip them out and I start here on test one, lesson 10. Now this is going to help me see if my son does actually know all of the content in the previous 10 lessons and if he you know shows some great understanding then we can move forward with that okay so here is i'm just showing you this is the first test so just so you can get an idea of where your student should be able to to complete that okay um, i'm gonna flip through these kind of fast so if you feel the need to pause the video so you can get a closer look then you'll you know you can do that okay so i want to show you this also this is the same as all the other lessons or all the other levels but the test is lesson 10, and then there's also a lesson 10. So even though there's 160 lessons, you actually have to add 16 because there's gonna be 16 tests. So now you're in it for 176 lessons. If you do the test on a separate day, that's 176 days, and that's a lot of days. So you'll see why I choose to skip right away, okay? So now just as a quick view, you'll see here some things. Now we did this a little bit in level two, this like what solve for n. So that's not entirely new. Um, it's more of a review. We've got time. Let's see what else we have here. Money. This is actually going to be new. I don't even know how to teach this, but we're going to be doing like one plus four plus five equals one. Anyway, I don't know. This is one of those things where I'm like, maybe I need to get the teacher's manual because I don't know what concept they're trying to teach. I don't really know what they're preparing for. Fractions maybe, I don't know. So here's more of those solve for N. Those are pretty easy. Um, let's see. Oh, here's some, what are we doing up here? Find the difference. Okay, so we were doing these types of problems, but only up to the tens place. So now they're just continuing on to the hundreds place and it's just the borrowing um, thing. So that's not necessarily new. We've done that before. Here we are to lesson 38. You can see that we are now going to be multiplying a double digit multiplied by a single digit number. And they're going to be teaching them how to do that. So that'll be interesting. Oh, goodness, right? This is where it's, I had considered potentially doing more of a like distance learning thing where we would have a teacher online, but I can do it. Come on, let's have words of encouragement, right? Okay. Let me talk to you really quick about these. So they do teach Roman numerals uh, a lot in level two, but we skipped all of them. 
I don't I taught him one through ten and then that was the end of that but they go clear to all of these whatever these numbers are and then they also include like C and M and and a bunch of other Arabic numbers so I call them Roman numerals but anyway that is in level two and then I can see here they're going into level three this is lesson 56 so um, here we are moving on and now we're going to be writing division terms so it's up here too so obviously it's come in in another thing but now we're starting to do divisions oh heaven help us okay what do we have here okay so now we're going to be um expanding i don't know i don't know how to do that so again maybe that's one of those reasons why you might want to get the the teacher's manual because it'll teach you how to teach that and that is something i may need okay uh, we're learning different units of measurement down here. Uh, these are mixed number and decimal equivalents. Here we are at lesson 100. Now we're going to be doing fractions into decimals and then the word number. So 0 0.04 is what type, how would you write that as a fraction and how would you write that as a word number? Oh, my Lanta. Here's equal, like, is 2 thirds equal to 8 twelfths? So this one you have to, like, multiply 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and see if they equal. Oh, man. I know my commentary is probably not making you guys super excited to teach third grade math here. But follow along in our homeschool life adventures. See, look at this. This is what we are learning in second grade. And uh, I didn't make him do it because I just, I don't know. I don't know that. So I guess we got to pick it up again. Anyway, as I was saying, just follow on my homeschool life series as we go throughout the school year. And I will continually tell you kind of how this goes and what we're learning about and how I'm teaching it. All that kind of good stuff. Okay, here we're finding the volume. Volume equals E times E times E. Oh, heck. Here's the area. Area equals length times width. Equivalent numbers, one is equal to some more stuff like that. Okay, then you get to the end. And let me just show you the last. This is going to be test 16, which is culminating. This is what your students should know at the very end. Okay, so we're going to round the numbers to the nearest 10 and 100. You need to be able to write Roman numerals. He actually didn't have any Roman numerals at the end of his second grade um, unit test. So that's obviously going to be more important. Draw a line for symmetry. Find the product. And reduce the fractions. Write the coins and bills received from change from $5. Here we go. Find the sum or difference. 6 and 3 elevenths plus 3 and 1 eleventh. Oh, heaven help us. Okay, find the quotient. Now, last year their lesson 16 test okay it was two pages so it's two pages as well this is the only lesson that's going to be two pages is that 11 lesson 16 test so i just wanted to show you these are a few other things ratios solving for n and let me get to the other side here with my one hand sorry about that uh, write the number pair we did these we've done these a lot actually in second grade so that's not a new thing this is new of course cross multiplication find the difference again this is similar but we've never gone up to the thousands and then find the perimeter area and volume so this will be an interesting year lots of things to learn and I think it'll be good I probably will end up getting the teacher's manual just because even looking through it with you guys now I don't know if I could teach that without some instruction on my own side. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you check my channel for any other content that you might be looking for um, when it comes to homeschool and curriculum. And we'll talk to you soon.